Today we have a guest speaker, Robin, and Robin is, um, goodness, you've been here at the library presenting a couple of times on a variety of things. She yeah. just came a few months ago to um, present her children's book at Storytime, so now she's back to tell us about gas generations against single-use plastic. So I'll turn it over to Robin. Thank you, Amelia, for inviting me to come. I feel like I'm probably preaching to the choir, <laughs> but what I want to give you is solutions to the single plastic pollution that you may already know or need to be reminded of or will learn about. Can you hear me in the back? Okay, that's fine. Great. So that we can spread the word, because it just takes one person to tell another person to tell another person to inspire them because how I got started on this, I read an article about a young boy who was in a restaurant in New England, and he saw that the waitress automatically put a plastic straw down whether you asked for it or not. And this boy was 11 years old, and he said to the owner of the restaurant, do you think you could have your waitresses ask if people want the straw or not? And he changed the entire restaurant way of doing things, and to me has become an icon about it just takes one to make a difference in the world. And I have some quotes here that I'd like to share. I am only one, but I am one. I cannot do everything, but I can do something. And I will not let what I cannot do interfere with what I can do. So I may not be able to change the whole world, but I can change my community. And so that's why I co-founded the organization called GASP, which stands for Generations Against Single-Use Plastic. And so far we've gone into the schools, and my husband makes art from recycled plastic, so We've gone into the schools and I've taught fifth graders and then the fifth graders have made jellyfish out of water bottles. And we have these bookmarks printed, which everyone's welcome to have one at the end, that gives you our mission and resources, which we'll have in our presentation. And there's so many more resources out there. It amazes me. So, just to get started, I want to draw your attention to our mission. To reduce, I didn't say remove, reduce single-use plastic by providing tools for long-term reduction of plastics in our environment. And our work in the community will educate the public about recycling myths, of which there are many, and partner with businesses, local community groups, and organizations to go sustainable. Hi, welcome, come on in. So what I do, she's all the way up front. So what I do is, whenever I go to a restaurant, I talk to them about, or a, an art opening, I talk to them about the alternatives to the plastic use that they have. And I offer research for them, for the products, to help them. So that's my, and I come and speak in the public like this. That's my part of GASP. So, uh, you may know this, but there are 18 billion tons of plastic dumped into the ocean every year, and these are old statistics, okay? That's not even necessarily what we're doing, what's going on today. And, the, the one-third of it comes from ships. So we got to get on those ships about that. Then the rest of them is litter on the beaches from river drains as well as being flushed down the toilet or from industrial spills. I mean, it's landfill sites, garbage cans near the coast, you name it. And scientists say that by 2050 there will be more plastic in our oceans than fish. So we've got to do something. We have to, what many people in the plastic pollution solution 
arena call it turning off the faucet. If your bathtub is overflowing with water, do you throw the towels down on the floor first or do you shut off the faucet first? We have to shut off the faucet. 44% of plastic is related to takeout food and drinks. When you leave today, I want you to have three things that you think that you can do to reduce plastic pollution. And I recommend that this be one of them. Because you can either bring your own receptacles and fill them. I've done that. I go to, you know, when they have the little soda machines and everything, I bring my own little cup to fill up at the soda fountain instead of the plastic cups. You can bring your own take-home bags. Has anybody seen these little wax things that you can fold up and take home <coughs> yourself? You know, or just bring your own little reusable plastic container. And then, you know, you can talk to the restaurant owners and say, would you consider using paper instead of styrofoam? 40% comes from household items made from single-use plastic. And I, uh, unfortunately, neglected to bring that, but, um, you know, you have detergent, liquid detergent coming in detergent bottles. Well, there must be 15 <coughs> companies now making these detergent sheets that work just as well. And they, they're easy for travel, too, and they come in biodegradable plastic and recycled cardboard. And you just take a sheet, and you can do a small wash, a third of the sheet, medium wash, two-thirds, and a full wash, a whole sheet. They really do clean. They're fantastic. And it's so much better for our environment. Now, for years, my husband was collecting plastic bottles from Recycle. I'm talking since 2023, so for 20 years he's been making art from all that Recycle. And he's just one guy, you know. We need to have a reduction of things like that. And we, because of all the plastic in our environment, ingest about a credit size of plastic every year. Because those plastic particles that go that slowly degrade in the ocean, the fish are eating those, then the bigger animals are eating those, and by the time it gets to us, we don't have a chance. It's even in the air we breathe, I'm told. So my question to you is, do we want this on our seashore? Mm -hmm or our waterways, or do we want this? So it's up to us. I have this lovely little bookmark that comes from the Environmental Defense Fund. <clears throat> we do not inherit the earth from our ancestors. We borrow it from our children. So let's take good care of it for our children and our children's children. That's a Native American proverb. Okay. Lily Tomlin said, I always wondered why somebody doesn't do something about that, and then I realized I'm somebody. <laughs> you are somebody, and you can do something about it. I promise you. You know, in England now, they have recently banned a lot of single-use products. In Los Angeles, they banned a lot of single-use plastic products. In Caribbean countries, they're banning. So we can do it here, too. And Polk County's not that big. And look at how many of us are here today. So we can do it. OK. So there's some suggestions on how to do this. We can recycle, we can reuse, we can reduce, or we can replace. And that's over here, too. You can take pictures of this later and see about it. So I've got two big question marks, or three, by recycle. Why? 
because not everything that goes into your recycling bin is recycled. Only 8% of what we put in recycling, we recycle. And what did somebody just tell me today that she took um, her recycle to Spartanburg and she asked the gentleman in charge of the recycling center there, which numbers do you take? He says, oh, we, we don't look at the numbers. Oh. What does that tell you about how much is being recycled? Yeah, that's right. right. Greenville County has stopped recycling. Only in the city limits do they recycle. The entire county has stopped recycling. Gosh. I live in Greenville County, unfortunately. Okay, so we talk about how some of it's disposed, some of it's incinerated and dumped in our ocean, and about half the plastics are designed to be used just once, and only 9% have been recycled. So the myth that we have to dispel is the myth that the fuel, plastics and fossil fuel industries are perpetuating, misleading us that we're, we're able to recycle this stuff. We're no longer able to recycle it. To recycle, by one scientist, plastic, the quote is, you're in a rowboat with a leak and you're using a teaspoon to bail it out. <coughs> well, what can you do? Well, you could ask the local recycling about what plastics they're actually recyclable, and you might get the answer that that lady got from the guy in Spartanburg. Or you could use fewer products that aren't recycled. Buy things in paper. Buy paper plates, not plastic plates. Buy paper cups, not plastic cups. These are promulgated as paper cups, but they have plastic linings. Yeah. So you have to be careful. Ball has come out with recyclable aluminum cups. Who now, has? Ball. B-A-L-L. -L, they make uh, canning jars. So you can come and look at all these things. You know, here's a big myth. I was watching this TV show. And they have these plastic bags. And they say, thank you. This is our commitment to an environment with you reusable, recyclable, and biodegradable. And then in the tiny print, it just says, only in certain facilities will this be recyclable or degradable. Because there's very few, you know, the biodegradable plastic thing is part of the myth. Because there's very few facilities that have the capacity to recycle it. So, instead of this, yes, Annie? Well, let's go ahead and finish. Instead of this, these have been around for a long time. Mm -hmm. You know, I get, I kind of feel bad because every time I go into the grocery store, if I buy, I want to buy produce that's not wrapped in plastic, and then I have to pick up a plastic bag to put it in. Albeit, I reuse that plastic bag a million times, but I should remember to bring little brown paper bags to put you it in. Excuse me, you don't even need to do that. I bring my my reusable bags and yes. I just throw things like the potatoes and tomatoes in. And then and on checkout, I roll them through and then that go. way. Mm -hmm. That's what we do. Yeah, that's what we do. Yeah. Well, Ingalls does have buy bags that we can uh, take home and reuse. They also have a recycling bin right outside the door, right. you know, where you put your plastic. I know, and I don't know where that went, yeah. but where, yeah, yeah. Right. I where that is. Goes, right? I do it to make myself feel good, but I don't know where that goes. Okay. So, you know, I, I go to Costco a lot, and all my products come in these Ziploc plastic bags, and some of the things inside these bags are in plastic. And so, my solution to not using a garbage bag in my kitchen trash bag every single week is I line it with one of those. Then I put in a paper bag, like my mom used to do years ago. Her garbage was always in a brown paper bag. 
And then if it's stinky, smelly or something, or wet, I stick it in these at least and reuse them. They're very good for cat litter. <laughs> very, good. <laughs> very good for lots of things. You know, so it's reusing them. What can you do? Use fewer products. Talk to your friends and family about the myths and support education. like mine that educate the public about recycling. Okay, so we're familiar with this chart and the numbers. And unfortunately, only the first two are really recyclable. Only the first two. Hmm. So in some facilities, you can get those other ones recycled. And this is m mainly cosmetic containers, plastic bottles, mouthwash bottles, and prepared food, and this is detergent bottles, grocery store bottles, and shampoo bottles. So, wow, Trader Joe's has really taken a stand. They now stop selling shampoo in bottles, and they sell shampoo in soap bars. Mm -hmm. And I would have brought mine, but my husband washed his hair, and it was all gooey and wet, so I didn't bring it. <laughs> but it worked. He said it works. <clears throat> it's a little inconvenient. <clears throat> But it works. So, um, you know, my mom always washed the dishes not with Dawn detergent, but with a bar of soap that she would soap up her uh, sponge with. We could go back to some of those things. Okay. So, as I said, number one and number two are pretty much recyclable. Three and four are, aren't widely recycled. And this may, five may be recyclable. This is never recyclable, but they'll put the symbol on it so you know. And there's other numbers and symbols. So you just need to check with your recycling service. And everybody is different, unless they just don't look at the numbers. <laughs> Okay, so what about reusing, like we talked about, like reusing some of the plastic? That's um, a process called downcycling, when uh, plastic is turned into a lower value product, and a lot of that is done, and you can read about that on some of your product packaging. And there are several companies that truly manufacture goods from repurposed plastic, but not all of them do. I read on the internet about, it's just a myth. It's not true at all. And some of the processes that they use to repurpose the plastic are just as toxic to our environment. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we've got to be careful. We can make a difference by re reusing single-use plastic products that we can't avoid acquiring, like when I go to Costco, you know, things like that. One of the things about recycling, you know, there's a lot of clothes now that are made from recycled plastic. Right. And what happens is every time you wash them, those minute pieces of plastic go into the water. Exactly. You know those polar tech things that we all love to wear in the wintertime? There are <coughs> bags that you can buy to put them in when you wash it that captures the plastic huh. so it doesn't go into your water system. But every time you wash those things, little particles of plastic go into the water. And that's what we ingest and drink our credit cards worth. It's unfortunate, but that is very true. And so I'm going to get to clothing in a minute about that, too. There's a lot of clothing synthetic fabrics that the process to make them is putting plastic into our system. Hmm. Um, so we suggest that you donate used clothing and purchase secondhand. Pretty much that's all I do except for my shoes and underwear, <laughs> you know? And um, that's the only way I can find cotton these days. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, cotton clothing or silk. I mean, I go into the stores, it's all rayon, polyester, modal, poly whatever. Anyway, you can do a little research or ask me to and I will about the companies that truly make pro products from reclaimed plastic and support artists like my husband, who makes art from recycled plastic. See, here's some of his little fish pins that he makes from detergent bottles and shampoo bottles. 
And he makes mm -hmm. earrings. He, I make the earrings. <laughs> we did, a, back in 2003, we were invited to a show in uh, the Boston area of recycled, art from recycled materials. So way back then, and then we wrote a book called Fantastic Recycled Plastic that we put a gallery of a hundred artists around the world who are using plastic for the, to recycle for their art. So it, it's happening more and more. There's his artwork. Go back, please. Go back. Yeah. Good shot. <laughs> Thank you. He actually has a YouTube about how you can do it yourself. Okay, so reduce and replace. That's where we want to get to. We want to get to reduce and replace. As I mentioned, some compostable plastics just aren't processed at all in this municipalities. So let's take it a step further and replace single-use plastic bottles, cups, plates, and utensils with earth-friendly products like the soap, and then I, I have here, um, I, every time I attend a public event and they're doing that, here's little paper cups to put food in when you're having an affair. And here's little plat, um, bamboo boats to put things in. So it is happening. Sierra Club made this little sandwich keeper for when you go camping. Huh. So you just put your sandwich in there and you just fold it over and it's washable. This book here, F star star K plastic, was first written in Britain and then it was uh, republished by Rodale Press here, Press here and it talks about <coughs> A hundred things that you, hundred one things to free yourself from plastic and save the world. And so it gives you a lot of the statistics that I gave you, and then it, it has categories like under food and drink, the beeswax food wrap, buy fresh over frozen, because frozen always comes in plastic bags, um, bring your own bottle, opt for an ice cream cone instead of a plastic cup. <laughs> You know, little things like that that you could do. So this, if you can take some time and look at this book, this could give you your three things to do to reduce the plastic. Does so the library have that book? I don't think so, no. What is the name of it again? It's F star star K plastic. Say it again. <laughs> I need to see it. It's, it's that word. It's that <laughs> it's the F word. Got it. Okay. F word. okay. <laughs> I didn't show the fifth, the fifth grade kids this book. <laughs> <laughs> they probably would have thought it was funny. Yeah. I know. Okay. What can you do? Use eco-friendly fabrics like organic cotton and hemp. Buy recycled synthetics. Polyester and rayon textile production is the second largest plastic waste producer. Mm. Packaging is the first. I owe my mother loved rayon because it was wrinkle free. Mm -hmm. She loved it. It was a great idea. So was margarine until they figured out it was very similar to jet fuel. <laughs> you know? <laughs> <laughs> but packaging is first. And so I get emails all the time. Write Costco, tell them to limit their plastic packaging. Write so and so, tell them to limit. Amazon, oh my God. Everybody talks about, I don't order from Amazon really very much because I just feel like they're just taking over what the other world. businesses can do. But people tell me when they order from Amazon, it's wrapped in plastic, in plastic, in a plastic bag. Wow. It's horrible. I, I do, I'm like you. I yeah. buy very little unless it's absolutely nowhere else. Right. But it's obscene. It's obscene. It really is. And they're so big. You gotta talk to them. I don't know. Someone will get to them. 
Ask restaurants to offer rather than automatically serve straws like we talked about. And bring your own takeout containers to restaurants. And what we're going to do eventually is create a gas seal of approval when we've talked to a restaurant who aren't going to automatically serve straws, who are going to do different kind of carryout, and we'll put that seal of approval in their window so you, as a, a caring citizen, can know who to go to. Well, you know there are restaurants that are carrying paper straws again. Yes. Okay. And Bamboo is another bamboo in California. Bamboo. bamboo. And I have here some of those straws that you can look at. There's also, I mean, it's getting to the point now where it's easy to buy bamboo silverware. Hmm. And I've been to a lot of functions where they use it. These uh, metal straws have been around for a long time. It's kind of hard. You throw it in your purse. You can't find it when you need it. But, but you keep them in your glove compartment. And every yeah, time you keep them, them in your glove compartment. Travel. And then these are called marine biodegradable home and industrial compostable. But remember, it doesn't always mean immediately. It could be marine biodegradable in 100 years. You don't know. But these are plastic straws that are supposedly ocean friendly. Mm. And I think I got these at the Iron Key. Mm. Right here. So how are they ocean friendly? If they're plastic? Supposedly, I don't know. So that's what you got to find out. So now you got to go to the company and ask them about that. Um, you know the old saying is, of course I can use a straw said by a thousand people. <laughs> I remember there was a book that I read to my children and I'm 72 years old, so you know it was a long time ago. But it was about recycling. And one of the things was, oh, you threw your paper uh, lollipop stick on the ground. Oh, what's one little lollipop stick? And then the next picture was, well, if everybody threw their lollipop stick on the ground, there'd be a mountain of lollipop sticks. And that's just it. So we have to stop adding to the mountain. <laughs> um, the Environmental Defense Fund has some neat pre-cycling tips. Pre-cycle is by making buying choices that support responsible products and packaging. Shop with reusable bags like we talked about. Um, i got to use my glasses for this one. <laughs> Buy large single containers, the largest you can store, and measure what you need into smaller reusable containers for everyday use. So I buy the big bleach container, and then I have the little ones in each bathroom that I decant it into. That's an example. Pass on styrofoam. Choose cardboard egg cartons, which are made from recycled newsprint. For paper boxes, such as cereal boxes, the rule of thumb is if the unprinted side is gray and not white, it's made from recycled materials. I'll say that again. With cereal boxes, if the unprinted side, the inside, is gray, not white, it's made from recycled materials. And compare the size of the package to the size of the product. Because a lot of times, especially at Costco, get this huge plastic thing in. And buy fruit and vegetables loose. So th those are just some ideas. You can choose one of your three from here. It's easy to do. National Geographic magazine back in 2019 put out a challenge and it has pictures of all the plastic that's in the ocean for you to see. They went, they went deep down into fish nurseries off of Hawaii. There's such a microplastic mess that the baby fish are just eating plastic from birth. And we have a picture in our book, Fantastic Recycled Plastic, of dead baby albatrosses because the little micro pieces of plastic in the ocean look like the little tiny 
fish that they would feed their babies, so they feed it to their babies <coughs> until their baby's stomachs fill up with it, and then they die of starvation. Mm -hmm. It's very sad. And I'm going too fast. I just want to... You can keep a zero-waste food kit in your car, like you said, keeping your uh, straw in the glove compartment. And I always keep cutlery, reusable bottle, and reusable straw, stuff like that, in my car. Food storage container to take to a restaurant. Use a reusable water bottle or travel mug instead of bottled drinks. I have pissed a lot of people off when I say, ask for water and they hand me a plastic water bottle and I say, no, that's one of my things that I will not do anymore, so I, I can't do that. They just, they just get so upset with you. <laughs> so this is a neat little thing, water with a you know, reusable jar with a plastic straw. We've been using this for years. You can get millions of them. Some of them come with plastic straws. Um, we're already using our reusable bags or totes. And then here's a big thing, and I really push this with the fifth graders. Ask your lawmakers to pass legislation that makes the shift from unnecessary single-use right. plastic to sustainable. This is what's happening all over the world, in Paris, in the United Kingdom, in Los Angeles, in Canada. And in Charleston County, where I just moved from. Really? Charleston County has a single-use plastic bag ban and <clears throat> other single-use container bans in effect because Charleston County lies on the ocean. On the ocean. New Jersey, which has a big Jer Jersey Shore, has for years banned plastic bags. For years. If you walk into a big box store like a Lowe's or a Harris Teeter or Publix in Charleston County, you'll get paper bags. Paper if you walk into a Walmart, they will give you a reusable plastic bag, which is meets the criteria for it. Right, but at least that, yeah. For a dollar. For a dollar. No, it's no, free. It's free. Oh, yeah, free. Some of the, right, I know they used to charge for them. I mean, every, I belong to all these conserving organizations and everything, and every year they send me one of their bags. Even uh, doctors without, across, borders. without <laughs> borders. I mean, I have so many of their bags, it's ridiculous. Alan, did you have that? Before I moved here from Washington, D.C., the, the uh, grocery stores were starting to charge for using a plastic bag. You had if to you pay, use a plastic bag. You, you had to pay for the plastic oh. bags. And that okay. encouraged people to use something else. I mean, I'm talking plastic. We, don't, we haven't even gone into glass bottles and stuff that's going on with that, okay? But in I mean, California, they charge you if you don't have a bag, period. Uh, you know, and they'll give you yeah, a paper bag, but yeah. they'll charge you for it. They won't give anything free. They expect you to bring your own. I think um, the uh, health food co-op in Hendersonville does something, uh, rewards you if you bring your own bag and then you can donate to a, a, a charity. That's a kind of nice Backhand they way of doing used it. Used to, they're not doing that way. They're not? But they don't use plastic at all. No, no plastic don't. bags. There In are fact, that don't there are that. some grocery stores around yeah. the country in some states right. that have aisles where there's no single use plastic. Mm -hmm. So that if you as a consumer can go shop there, it may cost a little bit of money, but remember, we're borrowing our environment from our children. so. You'd spend that on your kids, right? Okay, so here's some examples of what we can do. We went over this. And here are some resources, and they are the resources that are on the back. All you have to do is just uh, Google single plastic, and you will find blogs with people, you know, just, it's a fantastic worldwide effort now to make it happen. And one very famous person said, when there's a crisis, that's when people in invent the solution. <laughs> okay, well, I really want to thank you for coming here. I know I'm preaching to the choir, but I hope I gave you some 
impetus or some ideas, and please share your ideas with me and the group. also with substituting paper because we're very strong supporters of Dogwood Alliance in Asheville. Um, the amount of trees that are being cut even on, in North <coughs> Carolina for paper use. Right. So we always keep, for events, we always keep just a picnic basket mm -hmm. with our, you know, metal plates, cups, right. bowls, our regular silverware, cloth napkins. Right. And so I don't really think paper is a solution that it should be that cloth bags for shopping are wonderful. You know, I you agree. throw them in the wash. I agree. And um, anyhow. Does that uh, drive you crazy when you're in a restaurant, a fast food restaurant, and somebody goes and gets about 20 napkins? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's just one of them? We've yeah. done what you do, because we have a lot of those bags. And just if somebody's in front of us in the store with 20 plastic bags in their grocery cart, it drives me crazy. Yeah. For laundry, for a long time, we've just been buying a large container of baking soda, which is in a recycled cardboard, and right. all you need for mm -hmm. wash is to put baking soda in your wash water. Yeah, you know, just sprinkle it in, and you don't need soap or the containers wow. or anything. Yeah. Well, great. there's a lot of formulas for detergents yeah. and stuff yeah. like that. Hmm. Yes. I didn't know that. Yes, sir. One trick a, a friend of mine tried, he was, got into recycling in the 70s, and he would take a clean plate. He was a big Burger King guy, but <laughs> Later he became a vegetarian, but, but he'd take the plate in Burger King and say, I don't want the plate, for, I don't want the styrofoam, just right. place my burger on the plate. Well, he thought they were going to call the police. Yeah. I mean, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> you want to cause a commotion, try that sometime. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Of the part of the rules. Yeah. 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 yeah, it's tough. It's tough, but you know, you make a statement when you do that. That's and you get so somebody true, to yeah. think about it when you do that. Yeah. Yeah. Anybody else? Yes. Is there any organized push or a ban on single use plastic bags in Polk County? So. I'm the only one that I know. Um, and I have to tell you, I talked to Mr. Teaster at IGA about it, and it only costs him three cents for the plastic bag, and it cost him 75 cents oh, for the paper gosh. bag. Yeah. No, um, no. And they're in Washington, D.C. or someplace, this uh, long-standing health food mart tried to switch to the plastic biodegradable bags, and it cost them like a thousand times more. Mm -hmm. Imagine if those same store owners would just promote bring your own bag. Well, yeah. And give, I mean, them a, what, give people a cloth bag. Think of what they say. That's what people did in yeah. Europe. They yeah. brought their own sure. bag when they went to the yeah. store. I don't understand why the stores don't want to do that. No. Yeah. And we, we asked, we came, we lived in Brevard before here, and we asked the mayor who did a presentation about getting legislation passed in North Carolina on single-use plastic bags, and she said it couldn't be done. She said they had already made a ruling because the lobby is so strong from the, the plastic. The lobby is yeah. so strong. Right. And it's the it's same so with, uh, with deposits on your glass bottles. Yeah. It's the glass. They don't want. Jacksonville is also making great strides. They have a big organization. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I just haven't been able to make one of their meetings. Mm -hmm. Hendersonville. Oh. Up in Hendersonville, there's an organization. So if you want to contact me, um, on, I can give you my personal email, or on, there's, uh, there's gogasptoday at gmail.com, and I check it every so often. If you have any research or questions, I'm happy to send you information about that. I think a place to start is I've talked to John Cash at the Nature Store. Right. Mm -hmm. And he would like to go bagless and have people bring in their bags, but he hasn't done anything about it. I know. But I think he would 
probably support something like that. Right. So as a corporation, REI has gone backwards. Exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah. There are some corporations, and so those are the people that you have to send them thank you letters or go to their stores. Uh, Target is another one. Oh, a lot of plastic in Target. Any other questions or suggestions? Well, and maybe with all these coming to town, maybe people will start getting their own bags because Aldi's does not give you bags. No, but Aldi's also packages a lot of their fruits and vegetables yeah. Yeah. in plastic. Food well, Lion does start that too. Well, yes, start right. And you know what? We can tell restaurants and stores you just have to do three things like we're doing in our life. You know, if you set the example, just do three things, you know. Trader Joe's has really done a lot. Mm -hmm. And all these in Trader Joe's used to be two brothers. I don't know what happened. Well, they're still two brothers, but they <laughs> don't they have parted ways. Yeah, yeah. same old yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Anybody Whole Foods, Whole Foods gets you 10 cents if you bring your own bag. Mm -hmm. Who yeah. does? Whole Foods. Whole Foods. See? Bio used to do that. Five cents a bag when you brought your bag. Right. right. In fact, didn't Ingalls do that at one point, or was some place where I shopped? If you, maybe it was Trader Joe's gave you a nickel or something. But Trader Bilo's Joe's did. packages. Milo's did. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, that's, that's, that's right. That's that's a good thing, even though it's a small amount, five cents. It still puts that idea in people's it's head. Sad, yeah. You know, well, it makes if you I feel like a substitute, I don't have to pay. It makes you feel like you're doing something. Yeah. So here's to, uh, I just got an email that by 2050, the UN thinks we can tackle the plastic problem. Mm -hmm. So that was an article. I can send you a link to that article. Mm -hmm. But plastic waste kills up to a million seabirds and 100,000 sea mammals every year, according mm -hmm. to the United Nations. Mm -hmm. So we have to do something. Every minute, the equivalent of a truckload of plastic enters our ocean. And nearly a million beverages and plastic bottles are sold every minute worldwide. It's a little scary, so it's up to us to do something about it. And I really appreciate you all coming. Come up and look here at these products and these, some of these books that I brought over. You can talk to me personally and take pictures of that if you want.